Can you summarise sure. for, for the person who's never read The Boys? Summarise it briefly. What is it about? Sure, it's about uh, a world where superheroes exist, and they exist. They they're not nice superheroes the way Superman is. They're a kind of bunch of bastards, really. And so what it takes is a bunch of bastards to police the bastards, and that's where the boys come in. They're uh, super powered to a degree themselves. It's a bunch of rogue CIA operatives. Should I say this in a? They're a bunch of rogue CIA <laughs> operatives brought in, to, but um, and and they basically kick the shit out of superheroes a lot. There's a lot, there's a bit more to it. It has some uh, political undercurrents and some you know emotional undercurrents, but most people but I know buy it really for the bits where, like you know, Captain America gets his arse handed to him. Okay, quite frankly. So Mike McLeod, who owns this store, he says to me, Look, yes. this the boys is easy, easily the biggest seller." Uh, this this year, you know, it outstrips, outsells anything else we've got here. Can you explain what you think the attraction is there of the boys? I think I might have just said it already. I think you have, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to see Captain every, America get well, his you know, yeah, There's a degree, yeah. I mean, it's it's anarchic and it's violent and it's fun because when Garth writes stuff, he writes stuff that it may be violent, but it has this twisted humour to it as well, um, and so it's got. Anarchic violence and twisted humour and superheroes getting debased in the most appalling ways. Um, you know, that's, I can sort of see. Well, and it's written well. That's the thing. It's mm -hmm. got a very strong political undercurrent to it. And, sort of, and it's about sort of big business and how it sort of exploits and destroys and ravages as well. So it's got all that running behind it as well. Plus, some of the characters are very nicely defined. There's a wee character in it called Wee Yui, who's originally from Scotland. And, uh, and in fact, I'm working on the miniseries starring him, which is coming out next year, and it's all set in Scotland. Uh, and, you know, he's a great character, really well-defined, very interesting character. Yes. Nice. You know, when you read him, he's like somebody you know. So, you know, that's, that's the trick with Garth, is that he does all this super violence and all that sort of business as well, and all this crazy, over-the-top comedic stuff. But there's a human element to it that you can really connect with as well, so... He's clever that way, the smart arse bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and when I came in here, you were standing on a chair and you were taking photographs of, of people, and I managed to edge my way in there. Yes. This is because this is going to uh, be the basis of a, a sketch for you? Well, um, there's a sequence in, as with many of Garth's comics, there's a sequence in a pub in the story I'm doing at the moment. And when you're drawing look, like a pub sequence with all these people in the background, it can become quite awkward to think up new people to drop in the background. So it's quite nice to just come in. To, and if people are fans of the boys and you mm -hmm. say to them, do you want to appear in it? Yeah, yeah. And I'll just take a photograph of you and drop <laughs> you into the background. People are quite happy to appear in their co favourite comic and sort of go, look, there's me. You know, they're not going to get Butcher tearing their head off or anything like that. But, you know, uh -huh. uh, but they're going to appear in an issue of the boys. Well, there's one guy here with a beard who's very pleased because yeah. he, he was in the photograph. But there's yep. two here who missed, missed your opportunity. I'm sorry, gents, but you've... Yeah, well, you know, you missed your chance. Oh, they were still got a camera line about it, you know, if anybody <laughs> wants to appear. Well, Mike has. I mean, I'll stick you into the comic if you want. That's not a baller, you know. As long as I've, there's enough pub sequence, and as, you know, as far as I can tell, there's going to be plenty of. Sorry, I turned away there. That, that's okay. As far as I can tell, he's giving it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's plenty of pub sequence is going to be showing up so there'll uh -huh. probably always be an opportunity to stick somebody in the background uh -huh. if they if they so wish to appear what sort of input do you have on the characters and yeah, the, the plugger all squared nothing really? nothing at all um, and I don't mind it's, I'm here to push the pen around the paper and make the pretty pictures and that's fine that's my job I've never aspired to be a writer in comics I always wanted to draw the d pictures um, so I'm happy yeah. you know yeah. I, I couldn't write my way out of a wet paper bag I can tell a good joke and I can yarn on for hours, but you know I can't. So I can't write. Uh -huh. You know that's that's just the way of it. Look, just a, a couple more questions and I'll sure. finish. I'll that's let you right. get on because I know you're you're busy. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the contemporary comic scene. For example, my girlfriend Gillian, she's going to come in here later on, and, uh -huh. and I'm going to ask you to draw her. Sure. Um, but before I came down, and I, I live in a flat upstairs, she said that you know she well she's got a pretty two dimensional idea of what comics are about I can well uh, nowadays. imagine what it might well be so it's, you know, it's good versus evil isn't it it's uh, guys in spandex and it's, it's teenage boys who, who read them so for all the girlfriends, <laughs> sisters, wives, mothers, daughters grannies what other female type of relationship is there for all them you know, could you just describe from your point of view how you think comics have, have matured well um, comics have always been for, first and foremost about telling stories 
And it's the same as with any medium. If you walk into a bookshop and sort of go, well, my favourite books are Mills and Boone's books, so therefore all I'm going to find in this bookshop are Mills and Boone's books, well, then you're in for a shock because it's going to have thrillers and it's going to have... It's going to have novels about, oh, jeez, I can't think, it's sci-fi, it's going to have whatever, it's going to have stories about people's lives. It's not just going to be Mills and Boons. It's, and if you go to the movies, but you like sh- movies about giant robots, uh, well, you are going to be shocked to discover that there's actually movies that are political or science fiction or horror or what have you. Mm-hmm. So there's all sorts of movies and there's all sorts of books and there's all sorts of comics too. It's just that... Um, You've got the public perception of comics generally tends to be the Beano or superheroes, and that's because that's what's most visible. But, you know, there's plenty of other great comics. We were talking about Will Eisner earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, The Heart of the Storm is not a superhero comic, and nor is it a, uh, nor is it a uh, Beano comic yeah. either. It's a really fantastic story about a guy, a guy growing up in New York who's mm-hmm. a, Jewish, a Jewish immigrant in New York, and... Um, and the sort of trials and tribulations and whatnot, and um, and the you know all you have to do is go and check out Mouse, which is a story about you know uh, the, the guy who wrote Mouse, Andrew Mouse, Art Spiegelman. It was his granddad living through the concentration Nazi concentration camps, which is about as far away from superheroes as you get as well. So you know comics can touch on anything yeah. and they can be anything. I just happen to be a superhero geek and want to draw superheroes most of the time. <laughs> but I have done comics about the Troubles in Northern Ireland, which was in, with Garth, which was just a straight story, a little bit of a thriller, but was a story about, you know, a slice of life yeah. of Northern Ireland. Yeah. And so, you know, comics can be whatever you want them to be uh-huh. and whatever anybody wants them to be, just the way books, movies, whatever can be yeah. as well. And can you break a story for us today? What, can you tell us a secret that you're, that you're any projects you're working on in the future, movies Dying, or anything like that? Have you got anything no. to tell us that nobody? Well, knows? I'm working Come on. Your ears, by the way. Well, no, no. I mean, I think I've, I mean I'm doing the new boys miniseries, which is called Highland Laddie, and set in. That's going to sell Scotland. big in Scotland. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah <laughs> set in Scotland. Um, uh, but I'm also doing an issue of Deadpool. If for anybody who knows who the hell Deadpool is, uh, which is a Marvel character, I'm doing a bit of Deadpool and I'm also doing some Batgirl I believe for DC uh, aside from that that's me pretty busy with working on the boys mm-hmm. I'm sort of the regular fill in guy plus yeah. re- the mini series guy on the boys so that's me done I'm, I'm all all out that's, okay. yeah, that's me John, for the rest of the year. John look you've got uh, people here waiting to, to get you to sign copies of uh, the, the, the comic and to do drawings for them so I just want to say thanks very much for taking the time Pleasure. to speak to me and good luck yeah cheers thanks, thanks a lot